if not to make the world better, what is money for? And that quote is by Elizabeth Taylor. So starting with money and starting with a wealth mindset, number one, I want some of you to type in the chat, like, what is your goal for having more money? Because there has to be something beyond just having more of it. And when you think about money, you think about building wealth. If you don't have that reason beyond having more, it's going to be really hard to make more. So I'll start with some of mine. Number one, I want to fund youth entrepreneurship passions. I started off as an 11-year-old blogger, and I wish there were more resources that aided me in my pursuits. So funding youth entrepreneurship is a huge passion of mine. That is why I'm excited to continue building wealth. Another one is providing resources for underprivileged communities. Again, going back to my childhood, I was like, okay, I couldn't afford a camera. I couldn't afford this, couldn't afford that. Um, So paying it forward and doing that for other people. And then third, which is a very blanket statement, but it encompasses kind of my core values in my approach, leaving the world better than I found it. Like that has to be like the most all encompassing goal (laughs) Um, because having more money is great for your own selfish pursuits, but my goodness, what we can do with it to like make this world a better place is incredible. And I think if more, if more good people get more money, the world becomes a better place. So wealth comes to you when you work eagerly and leverage the heart. That is what wealth stands for to me. When you work hard towards something that you're really passionate about and you leverage what your heart and core values are, like the money just becomes a byproduct. The money is abundant. The money comes from corners you didn't even know were (laughs) existed, okay? Now, a little bit more background and context. I lived 95% of my life below the poverty line, not to sound like a broken record, but daughter of Nigerian immigrant parents, they came to America with $50. So I grew up um, one of six kids. My dad was deported back to Nigeria when I was 11. So my mom is providing for us six kids. And I'm like, I'm seeing that money is this limited resource. That's the, that's the mentality that I have growing up. And so I lived most of my life not seeing much money, not believing money was mine to have, not thinking there was abundance out there. And even my first year as an entrepreneur, like beyond the years that I was doing it as a passion, but like my very first year as an entrepreneur, like at 25, 26, I made $2,000 the entire year. $2,000. For those that would love to do the math and embarrass me, that's $166 a month. And that's less than $5 a day. (laughs) Mind you, I'm like having to pay for my food and, and, and bills and housing on top of that. So I lived a very minimal life. So when I, when I talk about the complete transformation that I've had to make, not only mentally, but financially and what it's been able to afford me, I'm really excited. But just like last month, I want to start off by calling myself out (laughs) and talking about some of the bad habits that I had to get rid of, especially mentally, because a lot of times when you don't see a positive example of something, you automatically assume the worst. So the first bad habit that I had to get rid in my mind was thinking rich people were evil. I don't know if anyone can relate. Rich people are the devil whether it was from a biblical standpoint or just because I saw rich people be snobs all my life, I thought rich people were evil. And the craziest thing about having that belief system is that you're literally repelling money. (laughs) When you hold that belief that rich people are evil, rich people are greedy, and it's actually trendy right now to hate rich people. (laughs) Like many people on Twitter love to go on rants about rich celebrities, like, you know, screw them, they're the worst, da 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 Like, those type of people are repelling the money that they actually want to earn. So the first bad habit I had to get rid of was thinking that rich people were evil. I might not have been exposed to the kind of rich person I wanted to be, but I had to get rid of that thought process that rich people were were not capable of doing good. Okay. Second bad habit that I had to get rid of is waiting to have more to invest more. I'm like, okay, well, if I get a little bit more, I can invest more. But we're going to talk about risk in a little bit, but you have to realize that the better you get with developing a good relationship with risk, the easier it becomes to make money down the line and the more of it that you can actually invest and the more of it you'll get back. But don't wait until that circumstance, that extra paycheck, that 
full moon, whatever beliefs that you have around the right time happening, like that day is never going to come. That, that's just the way it works. When, when we wait for the right opportunity, I think there's a quote that says, if you have to wait for your circumstances to be perfect, it means your success is conditional. That's convicting and powerful and painful <laughs> to hear. If you're the kind of person that's like, well, I'll just, I'll just wait. <laughs> but that was me too. Okay. That was me. The third bad habit I get had to get rid of is avoiding failure. The richest people I know all have failed numerous times. <laughs> they fail constantly because failure isn't a sign of like being a loser or getting things wrong. It's a sign of effort. It is a sign of effort. If you are willing to try, my goodness, like the future that's in store for you. I think there's a quote by Bob Proctor that says, fear and faith both demand that you believe in something you can't see. So you might as well take a chance on faith. Oh, that's good. I need, I need a couple fire emojis in the chat. Just a couple. Faith and fear both demand that you believe in something that you can't see. So you might as well give faith a shot. That's by Bob Proctor. It's powerful. So avoiding failure is literally saying, I'm going to buy into my fear because I can't see faith or fear, but I'm going to buy into the fear. I had to get rid of that avoidance of fear, that fear of failure, all of that. Okay. Number four, fourth bad habit I had to get rid of was staying around small-minded people because of the history that I've invested with them. The time invested, the history that we shared, I would stay in these small circles knowing that I was keeping myself small because of the time I've already invested in that friendship or relationship. Now, when you are building wealth, you will absolutely outgrow circles, you will outgrow conversations, you will outgrow habits, you will outgrow certain mentalities, and you have to be okay with like leaving people where they're at. I had this like horrible savior complex where whenever I read a, read a book or had this new understanding or just like was inspired by something, I had to evangelize everyone in my, my life. You must know about this book. You must hear this quote. You must think like I do now because I was on this journey, this path of enlightenment that everybody had to be on the same journey with me. And I have to contextualize, like, glow, chill out. <laughs> Everyone's going to be on their own journey. And you have to recognize that it's not everyone's goal to build wealth. This quote by Myron Golden really, really impacted my mindset when it comes to wealth. I, for a very long time, thought that I only needed to make enough. Now, in full transparency, I do seven figures a year annually. I'm mostly a solopreneur, but I hire contractors. And so I was like, you know what? I'm comfortable running a seven-figure business. I get to travel six months of the year. I get to live wherever I want. I get to support family and friends. Like I get to live a luxurious lifestyle. I am comfortable doing this. And Myron Gold had put, put it in this framework and it really changed my, my approach to this. He said, when you have kids and someone asks you, like, how smart do you want your kids to be? you'll probably say as smart as possible. If someone asks you, well, how healthy do you wanna be? Well, probably as healthy as possible, right? So how much money do you wanna make? Oh, just enough. Oh, you know, just a comfortable amount. It doesn't match up. It's out of alignment with everything else. If you want like optimal health, if you want your kids to get to the best schools, like if you wanna reach peak, in all other categories of your life, why then do you want to reach just enough with your money? Oh, just enough. Because again, when more good people make a lot of money, the world becomes a better place. And that really affected my approach to wealth and my approach to money and the way I view it. Because I was like, wait, am I being greedy? If I make more, I think somebody else, this, this should go to someone else. Maybe someone else should be having this. I, I, I know my heart. I know the way that I, I invest in things and, I, and I, I help fund missions and I help support people. Like the money's going to go to a good cause. So by me being the vessel of the money, like it's a, it's a good thing. And I had to really change my mindset about that. So shout out to Myron Golden for that um, incredible nugget. 
This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.